Number one is uh, data wrangling. So within data wrangling, one area where AI can AI rules can help or AI solutions can help is on data imputations, where you have the missing data and we can find some rules where what missing data is is there and how to populate it. That's number one. Next number two, uh, second area which uh, Sue mentioned and even I mentioned earlier, which is on data enrichment and uh, and data augmentation. There are two big areas which I can see AI can help is on feature engineering. Number one. Next number two is on uh, synthetic data. Hmm. So these are the these are the kind of scenarios I think AI can help, and this is where I've been having those conversations with my clients or prospects. You've talked about these challenges. Um, what type of AI techniques under the covers when doing this data engineering? So, um, so uh, it it depends, right? Uh, you know, so if you are looking at say uh, large scale migrations, etc., the one I I alluded to beginning, right? In those cases, you'll do probably be using Copilot and generative AI. You'll be using ChatGPT, etc. Now, if you are looking to do a product classification exercise, right? Data coming in from you know different master data sources and data fraud for different products that's coming in. In that case, you'll you'll probably doing a merge merge match kind of an algorithm that is something that you'll be using, right? So that and if you are tracking costs, etc., right? It will be more of a predictive analytics, right? That that you you're going to be doing. So it's could be generative. It could be, you know, classification. It could be predictive and in various ways. So these are the few things I've seen in the market. Uh, the other thing, of course, uh, I would also want to, you know, talk about a little bit is uh, data lineage and, mm -hmm. and data quality, uh, the, the places where we could use AI. For example, in data quality, you'll have to use things like anomaly detection tech techniques. For example, uh, if the sales suddenly goes spirals uh, north, right, and, and you're not expecting it to, to you know, uh, go uh, spiral northwards, right, then you'll have to use things like data quality. I mean, uh, in, in data quality, you'll have to use anomaly detection techniques to understand whether it's actually an anomaly or it's a false positive, etc. So that's the other place. And in data lineage, what I've seen is, um, imagine a, a brownfield kind of an, an environment where you already, you're already in a messy environment, you've got thousands of pipelines, etc. running. There's no way for you to have the, that, you know, tracking or traceability. Auto-discovering, auto-discovering, uh, relationships between data 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 assets is something i've also seen that and i've also talked to my clients on so the, which but let's step back for a moment do the users really need to know which ai technique or modeling approach or is it anomaly detection or this type of machine learning or this type of uh, generative ai i mean if you're buying a product that data engineering product that already has the ai techniques built in doesn't that kind of, you know, you don't really need to know the method that the, that the software company used to create the product. So Barzon, Clinton, you guys are from software companies. Let's talk to you about, um, you know, what, what do you do in, under the covers um, if, with AI to actually solve the problem yourself? Start with you, uh, Barzon. Sure. So I like to sort of just like break into two parts. Right? Like if you sort of put yourself in the data engineering team's shoes and then put yourself in the vendor's shoes, right? So as a data engineer, like what I used to teach my students when I was, you know, on the academic side was like to sort of first map out where you are, like in terms of your analytics needs, right? Like is the problem we're looking for, because I mean, if you look at the whole life cycle, you know, you go from a detection to diagnosis to prediction, and then, you know, to, you basically want to detect, diagnose, predict, act, and then learn and repeat, but you don't have the full life cycle for every single problem. Right. So it's really important as a first step, like you don't need to know exactly down to the, you know, last formula of how chat GPT is built. If you're trying to just use it, but you definitely do need to know where you are in that life cycle. If you're looking for, you know, if, if your problem is discovery or detecting where something's out of whack, then you want to be looking into outlier detection libraries and services and products, right? If you're looking for something that's uh, predictive in its nature, then you have to sort of ask yourself, is this like, um, open-ended problem, then maybe I need to sort of just go and learn, you know, leading to large language models or Gen AI, right? They're really good at predicting uh, the next open-ended sentence or image and, and, and things of that sort, but not every problem is open-ended. So maybe just traditional uh, supervised or even unsupervised learning could help you there. But where we basically, now, if, so that's the first part, right? Like this is where you want to be as a, as, a, as a user of this technology. You need to know what is the problem you're trying to solve so you can evaluate the right type of solutions. 
But from a vendor side, actually, this is related to what Prashant was saying uh, in answer to your previous questions, right? Like, the vendor has to actually have a solution that makes sense for the problem. It doesn't really make sense for me to go and train a deep neural net to predict which coffee shop you're going to enjoy the coffee the most. It just doesn't pay off. Like, I need to spend like $200 training this deep learning model that could tell you, hey, you're 5% more likely to like the coffee from this coffee shop than the other. But when we talk about something like cloud data warehousing, instead of telling the data teams to go and, hey, you know, go back to school and, you know, take this um, machine learning class and then come and build your own library and then tweak it, you can actually buy vendors who specialize in this. And then it's their problem to make sure that the cost of training those models and the impact of those models is outweighed by the benefit that they basically deliver to their customers. So one of the interesting things we kind of in this, like when you start to split the problem into knowing what your problem is, knowing what's a solution to it from a vendor side, one of the interesting dynamics, which is related to the cost of training machine learning algorithms that we found was that um, we basically kind of took away the cost risk from the customer. Like one of the things we tried to do was to tell the customer, you know what? Yes, training machine learning models is expensive, but so is running an over-provisioned cloud data warehouse. So whatever you basically save, like, you know, you pay one third of it to the solution and then, you you know, you pocket the other two thirds. So I think knowing what the problem that you're solving is really important for the user, for the data engineering team, but then for the vendor, it's really important to understand how these models are used, how they're adopted and how they're deployed and how they're evaluated. So I think that's how I please look at it uh, from the two different angles. Uh, Clinton, how about you? Yeah, what, how do you think about that in terms of embedding AI inside your product and so that the data engineers don't need to know what you're doing inside as long as you're doing it well, yeah, doing yeah. what you do well? And I appreciate that, uh, Barzan. Yeah. So one of the things that we always think about in terms of AI is the value in the AI really comes from the data on which it's trained. So similar to Chad GPT, as you mentioned, Bob, or other LLM AI technologies, you know, AI used by data engineering tools improve as they're trained on larger volumes of data. But unlike ChatGPT and other LLM technologies, purpose-built AI for data engineering is trained on millions of data pipelines and queries run on specific cloud data platforms such as Databricks or Snowflake, BigQuery or Amazon EMR. And while ChatGPT can generate code based on static examples it has seen on the internet and other sources, purpose-built AI can actually spot anti-patterns in code based on dynamic analysis of the organization's active metadata, including things like data tables, and relationships, indexes, partitions, uh, pipelines, and your cloud computing resources and other things. So. It's uh, really powerful when you can build an AI purpose-built for your data platform. 